He is Please tell me that the waiters were animated penguins. Please, Matt, tell me. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> Obligatory Nerdist question. Can you tell us about any of the comics that you guys were looking at for research for this project? You know, we looked at all of them. You know, I think that what's so great about the MCU is that we are doing new versions of these stories and characters, but we're building on what existed beforehand and we're hopefully setting up what's coming up much in the same way that each one of the the comic inspirations that we looked at was building on what had come before it and so you know there's so much wonderful work out there um and all of it was valuable uh, as we built this show if you had to pick out of all of the things that the comic books were inspiring you guys to put into the show and to kind of remix and work into the show out of all the stuff from the source material what was the most important to you matt that you got to bring to life when doing the show you know, I think it's really about the relationship between Wanda and Vision. I mean, and I think that's a through line with all of the other comics. Um, it's true, um, certainly in the movies as well. I mean, I think their love story uh, really works. It works on the page. It's worked on the screen. It works because of the chemistry of Paul and Elizabeth. Um, and, and that's what the, really the springboard is for this show. This is a love story. It's a romance, you know, and um, I think the, the, the spark that they have here, she is this person who suffered a lot of trauma, who's incredibly fiery. And, and here he is, he's the synthesoid who's, who's not really human and yet he's more human than any of us because he's this philosopher and he seems to get it. And, and you have these two really unlikely people coming together um, opposites attract, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful pairing. And I think that's really been the, the energy, the fuel for this whole show. I love the way you're summing that up. You were almost quoting Vision in Infinity War when you were like, I, I, th I think I, you know, I'm, I think it works. I think it works. I think I'm going to say it and think it works. That was great. Another comic book question for you. The character of Wonder Man, Simon Williams, pretty pivotal in the comic book world. At any point, did you guys at Marvel Studios consider him being a part of this series? Is this something maybe that can happen down the line? Plead the fifth on that one. Please. Fair, fair point, fair point. Okay, great, okay, great. Talking about the amazing remixing of this show, we travel through the eras of television history, man, and it's so much fun. Uh, as a television and pop culture fan, what was your favorite aspect of getting to utilize these classic styles and eras for the show? Well, getting to have lunch with Dick Van Dyke and Kevin Feige was definitely the highlight of, of this research that we did. I mean, being in the presence of the most amazing, brilliant performer. Um, he's Please tell me. me that the waiters were animated penguins. Please, Matt, tell me. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> uh, but there we were, we were in this, this uh, you know, restaurant right above Pirates of the Caribbean, right at Disneyland. I mean, it just, it was like, a, it was a dream. Wait, I mean, wait, wait, like you guys, you had this lunch at Club 33? We did, yeah, it was in the weekend of, of B23. We've been trying to figure out when we could do it. He happened to be down there too. They were honoring Dick that year. But it was, it was more than just a chance to sort of like, you know, uh, kiss the ring and though we were very happy to do that it was about what is the secret sauce like how do you how did you make the Dick Van Dyke show the amazing timeless classic that it is you know and to try to glean whatever bits of wisdom that we could um and so I I love that show I I love I love Lucy I love Bewitched I love I Dream of Genius so many of the shows that we were riffing off of that were personal favorites of mine that I used to watch in endless reruns as a kid um and so look it's this was the best job ever that my research was just go watch lots of old TV. Like, come on, that's the best job ever. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Episode one has that Dick Van Dyke flavor, definitely that style. And I think that you guys nailed it. It was so, it was so much fun to, to watch it and to know, wait, this is a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is bizarre, but knowing that everything is gonna sort of find its way back to that original franchise is great. But speaking of that first episode and uh, whatever other episodes you guys utilize this, you used a live studio audience. What was that like directing for that? That was such a huge part of that. I and mean, we did it just for the first episode because Dick Van Dyke, I Love Lucy, those shows did it too. And more than just saying, oh, well, they did it, so we need to do it. I mean, there was a reason why they did it and why those shows really work because of it. They're theater. They're, you know, they would rehearse, they would put it on beginning to end. If you go to a modern sitcom taping now, you see the scene like three or four times. And by the end, the stand up comic is like, come on, guys, laugh. You know, <laughs> they didn't do that on Dick Van Dyke. They just did it through like a play. So the audience has seen it all for the first time, laughing for real. The actors are feeling that energy. The performance rises to the occasion. It's lightning in a bottle. And, you know, that's what I wanted 
for this show. You know, I wanted us to feel exactly the same way. So we got dressed up in period clothing, you know, we were shooting on vintage lenses and vintage lighting. And we had, you know, everything about it felt like, you know, this was a time capsule, a trip, you know, to the past, um, but it, but it really energized the experience, I think for everybody. That is such a trip. I mean, the cast has talked about how fun it was, um, but uh, yeah, I can just imagine that energy is, is um, it's, that's gotta be so fantastic. That's gotta be awesome. Last question I wanna ask you, going back to some of those great Marvel references and Easter eggs, I have to say, glamor and illusion are some deep cut references, Matt. I, I I was like, hang on a minute, hang on. Oh my God, incredibly deep cut, nicely done, really nicely done. Uh, where Are there any other references or Easter eggs that fans can be excited about and where should they sort of be paying attention if those things are in the show? There are a ton of them, obviously, and we, we put plenty of things in um, on the writing level, the directing level. Um, uh, the, our prop guy, uh, Russell Bobbitt, who's amazing, who did Thor's hammer and Cap's shield and has been around forever, just did a bunch that I didn't even realize were there until I was in the editing room. And I was like, what? You know, so there's, there's a whole mix of those in there for sure. But there's some very meaningful sort of little Easter eggs that end up becoming certainly, you know, pieces of evidence that can help you put this puzzle together too. I'm incredibly excited. Like I said, I saw the first three episodes going back to just that pilot, the first one, the Dick Van Dyke episode, you guys were using that studio audience and there's a turn in the story where something shifts and it goes to different sort of camera angles. They're at the dinner table. And Matt, I got chills, man. And I was like, I'm going to love this show. Only seen the first <laughs> three episodes. I cannot wait to see the rest. I can't wait for everybody else to see it. Congrats to you and everybody who worked on the show. Thank you so much for talking to me, man. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you so much.